War. War changes a man. Being sent against one's will to another country is a great way to see the world and gain a vast array of expertise. The war can wear on any man, and the desire for peace can overflow any person at a moment's notice, driving them to become a conscientious objector. Henry was wandering the countryside and found the recently converted pacifists, standing around, dejected from all of life's goals and purpose. He wanted to return home to share his experiences with his fellow countrymen, but was afraid that they would not be receptive of his newfound ideals. Henry suggested to the wise man that he should give his philosophical knowledge to the local populace. They would surely be welcoming of, of a man of such intellect. The cumin initially rejected the idea, but with some gentle prodding by Henry, he was convinced to go on a journey to enlighten the fine people of Bohemia. Henry told the cumin that there was a local lord named Sir Divish, who was particularly wise and had a fondness for spirited philosophical debates, and that he should go meet him. This was surely an opportunity of a lifetime. Upon our arrival to the town, there was great excitement in the air. The villagers all started to clamor about our arrival of the greatest hey, mind of this generation. They ran ahead of us to the castle to warn the local officials of our human. presence. Over there. The castle was there a buzz a from our arrival. Even the local lord welcomed us. There were so many well-wishers that Henry thought it would be prudent to find an elevated position for our cumin to preach over the fine people of the castle. This was quite a step up for our philosopher friend. From standing in the middle of a cow dung ridden field to being an esteemed guest at a lord's castle. The first attempt to hold a debate at the castle went poorly when the philosopher lost his footing and spooked a local public what official to accidentally to? mortally wounding the cumin. Great. <laughs> this, however, did not deter Henry. He was well aware that accidents may happen and was not against using his own time manipulation powers to turn back time. This time, Henry made certain that the philosopher's footing was secured, and he was allowed to start lecturing to the locals on ideas of math, science, and all of life's difficulties. Things were going well enough. The cumin was able to even get Sir Divish worked up in a frenzy of philosophical fervor. Henry was certain that things were going well, and went out for the refreshment. but came back to find that the philosopher was murdered with a bucket of water. One could only assume that there was a disagreement over fluid dynamics, perhaps a misunderstanding between laminar and turbulent flows. Whatever the case, Henry did not fault the people since applying scientific ideas are tough, and people are sometimes become quick to anger when they do not understand basic principles. Using his time manipulation powers once again, Henry decided to position the philosopher higher up in the castle to be at a pale swinging distance. This would be quite beneficial since now the philosopher will have a larger audience to hear his words of wisdom. However, in the attempt, the philosopher lost his footing once again, but this time was able to catch himself in midair to stop his ascent. This advanced martial technique takes years to learn and decades to master. A local official quickly became perturbed after learning that this technique could be outside his own physical limits and spent his rage on a human philosopher. It's always sad to see that people take out their frustrations on others because of their own shortcomings. Bending time once again, Henry was able to place the philosopher at a higher vantage point, at the cost of his own ankles, but the affliction was well worth to give the cumin a breathtaking view of Townburg and the greater countryside. The fresh air and a dynamic view would guarantee a clear mind and an opportunity to garner brilliant ideas. Such ideas were being presented already where the Cuban philosopher thought of camouflaging himself in plain sight. This would reduce the risk of water receptacles from finding him and keep him out of sight of low-brow populace who wield range armaments. And there Henry left the philosopher on his perch, overlooking the sleepy village. He hoped that when he returned, the villagers would be changed. A change for promise of progress, promotion of prevalent academic ideals, and the presence of perceptive propositions that could change the world. Henry slept that night comfortably in his tavern bed, knowing that the philosopher was now the sentry for the town. 
safeguarding everyone's physical and mental well-being. Waking up the next morning, refreshed, Henry went to wish the cumin a fond farewell and best of luck in reforming the populace. But the cumin was not there. Perhaps he was camouflaged into the castle as an act of defense. However, this was not the case. The philosopher was not at his perch, watching over the village, but rather laying dead, broken upon the soft silvery stone below his vantage point. A pang of sadness and grief overtook Henry. He was troubled that the people of Townburg would never know peace and only knew of senseless violence against those who were only trying to make the world a better place. Henry thought it was best to take the philosopher away, deeper into Bohemia, away from the brutish podink town of Townburg. Take the philosopher to see the sights through the countryside, and stretch the legs and mind away from the confines of city life for just a short little while. The best place that Henry thought to take the philosopher had to be a great place of learning, a foundation where men dedicate themselves to pursuit of worldly advancements in the arts, science, Literature, of course, helping others in time of need. The monastery seemed like the perfect place for the cumin, famous for its strong walls, architecture, and its learned men. If a local lord could not appreciate a sage for the ages at his personal disposal, perhaps men that dedicate their lives to God and learning would flock to search a visitor. And indeed they did flock. They ran as fast as they could to tell others. Local officials were invited as soon as possible to bask in the wisdom of the cumin that had traveled so far. The attention was deafening, and while this recognition was great to well, see, now. the philosopher felt that the this much attention was distracting to many of the monks that lived here. Their focus was tied up in dedicating their every waking moment and spreading the word to cumin instead of their own worldly work. The cumin did not want to be a distraction to the monks and their work. He wanted them to live their lives normally, with a little bit of enlightenment, not to be thrown into a frenzy. The philosopher decided to bid the farewell to the monks and officials for a less distracting location, somewhere where the cumin would not disturb the fragile peace. The perfect place would be no other than the local tavern. The patrons rose from their seats to greet the cumin philosopher and begged him to witness their own martial prowess. The philosopher, though taking a vow of pacifism, knew the importance of exercise, and teaching the locals on the proper forms seemed a great way to keep people healthy. For one has to train the body and the mind to live a long and prosperous life. Many of the guards joined in the training, and sessions went long into the night. An opportunity to learn from a true master was rare in these parts, and the populace embraced the teaching of the cumin and took every word to heart. It was said that weeks after this training, every arm was sore, but there was no better fighters in all of Bohemia than could be found at that tavern. The willingness of the local tavern patrons to partake in warfare knowledge to Cuban pleased the philosopher. Their thirst of learning seemed to never be sated, and they asked for more. But the philosopher knew in his heart that he did not want to lecture on only warfare, but other topics. He needed to go to a place where people looked up to him, asked him a variety of thought-provoking questions, yet did not disturb the sleepy town with the ruckus he would undoubtedly would create. So Henry packed up the cumin. Both of them bid a fond farewell to everyone. The visit to the town was enlightening and welcomed, but there was only one place that could satisfy the philosopher needs. He wanted to go to a place where people would listen to his lectures, but not resort to violence whenever it went against conventional means. He wanted a place where people would look up to him, yet not disturb the natural balance of life with his presence. He wanted to be the reason for a destination, not to arrive at a destination. The ambience of the countryside was a relief to both Henry and the philosopher. Large towns and churches seemed to have too much going on, too much stress, and not enough relaxation time for the finer things in life. It is always a relief to be able to hear the songs of nature around you, but it would be better if we had somewhere to sit to have refreshments while watching the world turn. To be able to discuss any philosophical debate in a relaxing atmosphere would be grand. And through the trees, an opening appeared. A small quaint inn in the middle of the countryside, not connected to any bustling town and church. The inn in the glade. A quite picturesque location well, with no. plenty of travelers far well. and wide 
who stopped by to relieve themselves from the worries of the world. This was the perfect location for the philosopher to be at. Henry, wasting no time, placed the cumin high above the tavern patrons and allowed him to preach his sagely knowledge to all. And the patrons all gathered around, looking up towards the cumin with great interest, hooked on every word, every motion, and for every second. Andrew, the keeper of the inn in the glade, was curious about how he could once again obtain legs. Others kept up practicing their martial skills while at the same time being a captive audience for philosophical debates. This was the perfect place for the human philosopher. Henry, being satisfied with his effort, decided to bid the human philosopher an affectionate farewell and decided to ride off. Alongside him was fellow patrons running towards the towns to tell others about their arrival with the great human sage didn't take long for others to hear and start flocking to the tavern to escape the grind of their daily lives, to enjoy a refreshing drink from the innkeeper Andrew, and to quench their thirst for knowledge from the great human philosopher. All in all, the Inn and the Glade was now known throughout the greater Bohemia region as the Inn and the Cumin, the place where one of the greatest minds in all of Bohemia resided at, the Cumin Philosopher. Will you? <laughs> 